Hey guys, here on the Palatine Hill in Rome, this amazing archaeological site is full of things to see. You may have also heard about the super sites. On today's video, I'm going to go over what they are and the new rules for visiting them. Let's go. All right, so what are the super sites? What is super? Super, when this first came out, they were seven unique places to experience Rome. So when this first came out a few years ago, the first seven sites were the House of Livia, the House of Augustus, the Neronian Cryptoporticus, the Loggia di Mattei, which included the Aula Isiaca, which I'll explain in a minute, <laughs> uh, the Temple of Romulus, the Basilica of Santa Maria Antiqua, along with the uh, Oratory of the Forty Martyrs and Domitian's Ramp, and the Palatine Museum. And when you bought your super ticket, you actually got a two-day period in which to visit these sites because they were open on alternating days. So here we are in 2023. A lot has happened. A lot has changed. COVID happened. Lockdowns happened. Some sites shut down. Most have reopened, but not all. I'll go over that. And some of the rules have changed. The great news is they've actually added a couple of new things. First of all, they've opened up the Curia Iulia, which was the Curia under Julius Caesar. It is an amazing feeling to visit the Curia Iulia because you are standing where Julius Caesar held Senate meetings. I mean, it is just full of ambiance. The floor is the original floor with these beautiful, colorful mosaics and the architecture is still the same. Of course, a lot is missing, but you will definitely get a sense of history walking into the Curia Iulia with the super ticket. Another piece of great news is that the Palatine Museum closed down for renovations and they've recently reopened. And this is another amazing thing that is part of your super ticket. And frankly, for me, it makes the super ticket worthwhile all by itself. So right before everything shut down, they had opened up a new site, the Domus Transitoria, which was a wonderful underground site with virtual reality. I did a video for you guys about it. Unfortunately, that has closed down and it has not yet reopened. And the other super site that has closed down and not yet reopened is the House of Livia. But I have it on good authority that they should be reopening very soon. So hopefully by the time you're watching this video or by the time you're planning to come to Rome, those sites will have reopened as well. The great news is that all the other sites are open almost all the time with a few exceptions, very easy to access and you just need your super ticket and that's really all you need. You don't need to book anything else in advance. How do you get this super ticket and what is included? There are basically two ways to get the super ticket. One of them is to book what's called the full experience. The full experience is either booking a Colosseum underground visit or a Colosseum arena visit. I've done videos for you guys about both of these so you can check those out. When you buy a Colosseum full experience ticket and you get one of those special visits, your super pass is included in your ticket. With the full experience ticket, you actually get two days to use it. So you have to go to your Colosseum visit at the time and date that you booked, but the Roman Forum Palatine Hill, which includes all the super sites, you can visit either the day before, the same day as your Colosseum visit, or the day after. Just know that when you enter the Roman Forum slash Palatine Hill, that's one park, it's one entry and you only get the one entry. So you wanna make sure that you plan out all the things you wanna see on the Roman Forum, Palatine Hill, including the super sites on that visit so you don't leave anything out. By the way, if you are enjoying this video, please hit the like button below. Apparently that really helps with the algorithm and I would really appreciate it. Thanks so much. The second way to get the super ticket is to buy the Roman Forum Super Pass. Now this ticket does not include the Colosseum at all. The ticket doesn't have a time and date on it. So once you purchase it, you have 30 days from the time you buy it to activate and use this ticket. With the Forum Super Pass, you have access to the Roman Forum Palatine Hill once again for one day and you can visit all the sites including all the super sites on the Roman Forum Palatine Hill on that day that you visit. There's actually a third way that you can access the super sites and that is what I do which is by purchasing a Parco Colosseo membership pass. This is good for one year 
and this is really great for those of us who live here or if you come often to Rome, it is a great deal. If you want to know more about that, I've got a link in the description below. But for the purposes of tourism, I think you're probably going to want to get either the Forum Super Pass that includes just the Roman Forum, Palatine Hill and all of the super sites or the Colosseum full experience ticket that also includes access to the super sites. These super sites tend not to be on any tours, so you're going to be visiting them on your own. And considering that there are so many of them, you're going to want to maximize your time if you want to see as many of them as possible. So how do you do that? As I mentioned, not all of the super sites are open seven days a week, so here are the different closing days at this time. The House of Augustus is closed on Mondays, but open every other day. The Curia Iulia is only open on Saturdays, Sundays, and Mondays. And the Neronian Cryptoporticus is closed on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. When the Domus Transitoria and House of Livia reopen, they may have closing days. I will be updating the website and I've got links to those pages in the description below. Just be aware the super sites are also closed on the free Sunday, which is the first Sunday of every month when state sites are free to visit, that includes the Colosseum and the Roman Forum, the Palatine Hill, you can show up here, visit for free, but the super sites are closed. Also, the park that includes the Roman Forum and the Palatine Hill follows the same opening hours as the Colosseum, and these hours change throughout the year. For example, I'm filming this in the dead of winter and the whole park closes at 4.30, last entry is at 3.30, and the super sites all close at 3 o'clock and you have to be out of them by 3.30. In the height of summer, the park closes at 7.30 with last entry at 6.30. And so you won't be able to enter into the super sites um, after 6 p.m. and you'll have to be out of them by 6.30. So these hours change according to the daylight hours pretty much. And you can see them in the description below. I also have pages about this and they are listed on the official page for Coliseum tickets, which is co-op culture. And I'm linking to that below as well. I would suggest you dedicate a day to this. Although if you're short on time, you probably could do it in a few hours, but I would start in the morning just to make sure that you have the maximum amount of time available. As you have probably figured out by now, there is not one single day when all of the super sites are open at the same time. So this may depend on the days that you're in Rome, but if you have a choice and you really, really want to see the house of Augustus, don't come on a Monday. If you really, really want to see the Curia Iulia, you can only come on a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. So you'll have to figure out what your priorities are. My suggestion is to come straight to the Palatine Hill and go right up to the Palatine Museum. This is going to give you a great history of the Palatine Hill, including the layout. Uh, you'll find artifacts and statues from ancient Rome going all the way back to prehistoric times. I mean, it is a really complete visit and it will give you, literally, it will give you a lay of the land. Just next to the museum, you're going to find the Aula Isiaca, which also has uh, the Loggia Matei. These are one super site. Basically, it's one building where the Matei family from the Renaissance uh, had this room and this ceiling is all painted with Renaissance paintings uh, in the grotesque style. Also in the same building, you're going to see these rooms from the time of Augustus and the Isiaca is referring to the cult of Isis. If the Domus Transitoria is open, and I'm hoping it will be soon, you could then visit the Domus Transitoria. Another great piece of news is that to visit the House of Augustus, you no longer need to book in advance. They are also offering multimedia shows that you can attend in English or in Italian. They're alternating them every half an hour, and you can just show up and find out when is the next one that you want to attend and either wait for it or come back. But as I said, you can also just go in on your own and visit the House of Augustus. It's pretty amazing that you can see this site all by yourself. This was one of the super sites you had to book in advance, usually online. You had to pay a two euro booking fee. That is all gone. You can just show up. You can walk around and visit the entire site all on your own if you like. When and if the House of Livia is open again, that's right next door to the House of Augustus, so you could visit that as well. And finally, right next to the House of Livia is the Neronian Crypto Porticus. This is basically just a passageway that was around at the time of Nero. It's actually where Caligula was assassinated. So as you can see, quite a few of these super sites are on the Palatine Hill and they're all together, so they're pretty easy to visit all in the same space. For the rest, you'll have to head down into the Roman Forum. 
from here, you can go down to the Arch of Titus, walk down the Via Sacra, and make your way to the Temple of Romulus. The Temple of Romulus is inside of the Roman Forum. It is an amazing structure. It is a round temple. It has the original bronze doors from ancient Rome. This is where they often hold temporary exhibits. So you will often see something of a queue to get in here because the space is small. People want to go inside and see the exhibit, but because the space is small, the line should move fairly quickly. And by the way, Romulus in this case is not referring to the founder of Rome, uh, of the twins Romulus and Remus fame. This is referring actually to the son of the Roman Emperor Maxentius, who died young and was deified. After you visit the Temple of Romulus, make your way over to the Basilica of Santa Maria Antiqua. Santa Maria Antiqua is an amazing space. It was something like the Sistine Chapel of the medieval. Uh, these are beautiful frescoes, incredibly intact. The space is wonderful. You're going to want to spend maybe 15, 20 minutes in here. You'll also see the oratory of the 40 martyrs. This is just kind of a pop-in. And if you want, you can climb the ramp of Domitian. Domitian's ramp was used for him and other emperors to go up and down the Palatine Hill into the Roman Forum. And finally, if it is open, if it is a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday, you could then visit the Curia Iulia, which again was the Senate House under Julius Caesar. Finally, if you're wondering how to get tickets to the Colosseum, check out my video all about why it is so difficult to get tickets to the Colosseum and how you can get them. If you're enjoying this video and you want to see more like it, I have a whole playlist with lots more videos all about ancient Rome, including all about the Colosseum, the Roman Forum, and the Palatine Hill.